stories. I tell stories through fashion. Um, I use it to uplift people, to inspire. I felt like for the longest time I didn't see anyone who looked like me. Um, so for me it was more so telling this story or helping people or helping women rather look their best and feel their best. I didn't realize that I actually had any kind of impact on anyone because I just love fashion. So it was my passion that I got to share. But when women started emailing, emailing me and sharing how I inspired them, I was kind of moved and I was just like, really? You know, and then brands started reaching out and I was able to work with them. Hey guys, what's up? I am getting ready to go on a trip. I'm going to Los Angeles. I will be moderating a panel. And of course, I'm gonna bring you guys along. It's going to be really fun. Mm. That was my, if I say her name, she's gonna start talking, but yeah, the device. But anywho, I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm actually leaving tonight and I haven't packed. I'm just literally finishing, like, well, I started packing. Um, it's just a carry on. I don't have any photo shoots or anything planned, but it's still kind of full. Um, yeah, so I just I think I just need to add my toiletries and I got a new pair of shoes. I'm going to share them with you guys real quick. Um, and then, yeah, I think the next time I see you after I share the shoes will be in what you call it will be in L.A. All right, let's let's open these new shoes. <laughs> Okay, so I picked these shoes up from Saks. I was actually going to get them from the Fendi store, but they didn't have them. There's a new Fendi store in Atlanta and it's absolutely stunning. Um, but yes, let me share these with you guys. And I have to say, these shoes are super duper comfortable. So simply Shannon, Shanna, um, if you guys are not following her, you need to follow her. She was wearing a version of these um, during fashion week and she told me how um, comfortable they are. So I wanted to get a pair I wanted to get a pair similar to the one she was wearing, but they didn't have my size And this is I guess a newer version and the heel is a little thinner, but they're comfortable. So I got a 42 I'm usually a 42 in um, European brands. So I did the 42 and I love them Stay tuned to see how I style them in LA anyway. All right, guys, in California, we're trying to figure out where the In-N-Out Burger is. Fifi, say hi. Hi. Winnie, say hi. <laughs> so yes, we, I've never had In-N-Out Burger, so I want in and well, Fifi wants it, and I figure I'll have, have it as well. So let's see if we can find it. for two well a day well technically today's day two so i got in around like 12 a.m 12 30 a.m on tuesday and today's wednesday um i'm here because i know i didn't say why i was here so my one of my girlfriends um has this or works with this really cool organization um the eating group and what they do is they really shed a spotlight on positive female voices in Africa and the diaspora um, and just really trying to initiate change. So they're having a panel about storytelling and how storytelling changes the narrative and gives positive platforms to women, um, especially African women and opportunity and a whole bunch of that. Um, so that's kind of around the discussion that we're going to have yesterday I didn't really vlog anything, just a little bit. We went to, so um, they're partnering with um, a couple of actors and some really cool people. Um, the event is going to be at um, Lake Bell's house um, and I'll insert clips. We kind of did the before and then we're getting ready to go there. So we'll see the, 
the after and I'm going to be moderating the panel and we're just going to discuss and talk about storytelling and how women have been able to use storytelling to change the narrative. Um, at first I was kind of like, well, what's my story have to do with this? But then, you know, just further having the conversation with her and just kind of showing how content creation is such a powerful tool and how it's changed the way women get to see themselves in um, mainstream media. Um, this particular conversation is really geared towards changing the narrative of, in Hollywood and whatnot, but just in mainstream and just how this job has given so many people so many different platforms, so many different opportunities, myself included, showing that there's possibility to make a space for yourself and to make it a lucrative career and also changing what is beautiful in that narrative of what is beautiful. Um, no one like me <laughs> was in mainstream media of what was beautiful or probably would even be considered for some of the campaigns that I've done in the last 11 years. So um, I think sometimes I take my success for granted, but just these kind of conversations not only allow you to realize how far you've come and how well you're doing, but also to encourage other people to do this. You know, um, when I started, <laughs> I really didn't know that many people that were working with a lot of brands. There were people that had tons of like, you know, followers and whatnot, especially in the beauty space, but were they really working with a lot of brands and making money? I don't think so, to be honest. I really don't think so. Um, but you know, I, I felt like I've always been fortunate that I, have been able to make money for so long in this space um, and I continue to do well in this space but um, I'm loving this direction for me in just terms of having these conversations and just really putting a spotlight on content creation. I feel like there's so many negative connotations attached to influencers or content creators and a lot of people don't really stop to even acknowledge the fact that content creators have really bridged a lot of, bridged a lot of um, gaps in the fashion industry and in various industries in general you know we see the the end result which is maybe a fashion haul or a vlog or whatnot but the way i've always described my job is running a magazine but by myself luckily now fortunate for, fortunately for me now i have a bit of a team but when i started i was doing all of the work by myself mind you there weren't as many platforms to post on it was just my website and instagram but now it's youtube it's tiktok it's threads it's everything else which makes it a little harder and there's so many more people in the space which makes it a little bit more harder but you know we don't look at vogue or we don't look at oprah or anyone else that we consider successful running magazines and actually influencing people and we don't add co negative connotations to what they do so i think we have to really start rethinking how we talk about content creators and you know there are some content creators that you know are a little cringy but for the most part a lot of people take this very seriously i've always ran my my space as a business um, you know, and I, I've just been very fortunate that people find what I love interesting. Um, and that's why I've been able to do well for so long. But yeah, I'm very excited. I'm in my room. My girlfriend got an Airbnb. Um, I don't even know. I think we're in Pasadena. I'm, I'm so bad paying attention to stuff because I, I feel like when we just got in, it's just been a lot of running around and stuff. Nothing really fun or fancy, <laughs> but, um, we were looking for In-N-Out Burger <laughs> And which that was the first clip and then now I'm back here. But that was the first clip from California that I shared. But we didn't find in and out burger. We ended up going to Popeyes. And then we went to Lake's house to just kind of look at the space and brainstorm on the flow of the dinner. But I'm gonna bring you guys along. So hopefully I'll be able to share as many clips of the conversation as possible. And yeah, I'm so excited. Oh, I have my hair twisted because even though it's natural hair, I'm finding that it's tangling a lot and it's annoying. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did. I'm just wearing this Banana Republic tank top and these shorts are Organza um, uh, Imadu Edosian shorts. They're really cute. I shared them in an outfit. I wore them out and I think I've worn them a bit more casual as well, but I just have the hair twisted until the event and I have no makeup on right now because um, I'm going to do my makeup when we get there. Maybe I'll film some of that. 
yeah, maybe I'll send some of that. I'm gonna bring my tripod, but the skin is skinning. Yes, let's get some natural light. Um, I shared some of the new products that I'm using. Well, in addition with the Lancome um, Pet Dyed 300, HPN 300, and it's really been a game changer for me. I shared that post on Instagram. I'll have it inserted. And then I'll also try and share it on YouTube shorts, but just really loving my skin right now. Even one of my girlfriends, Sasha, has known me for over 20 years. She's like, this is the best my skin has been. So very excited about that. Of course, I'll link it for you guys in case you're in the market for a new cream. The, the, the bottle that I have doesn't have SPF in it. So I use Black Girl Sunscreen in addition to using the, the cream, but I know they do offer an SPF option as well. So in case you guys want that, but yeah wearing my idol earrings. I'm obsessed with these earrings. Let me know if you pick, pick them up. I will link them for you guys again, but they're just so cute and fun. My ear was kind of, in, I don't know if it was, in, it was infected. I don't know what I did, but I couldn't wear an earring. I couldn't wear earrings on this, um, on my left ear for almost a week. So now it's better. I can wear earrings again. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, just simple this morning. Then I wear my Jordans. Um, and then just kind of do a little bit of work before the big conversation. So it should be fun. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>so we can know what you're wearing. Actually, you can just tell me, what are you wearing? Um, so this is FIA. Fire uh, Factory. Fire Factory. We love. And the skirt, um, I don't know, I got it at a Noble store called Culture. Nobu? Noble. It's oh, like Noble. Noble Iwe. Oh, and that's in Lagos? Yeah, it's in Lagos. It's Very at the Good cool. Beach. So he's got a store there called Culture. Very and they, cool. And I got these shoes too from him. Okay, I'm gonna come around so <laughs> we can see the shoes. They're, I, they're, they're, I got them from, uh, what's her, his name, store? No boo store? No store. All right, I love yeah. it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right, so tell me what you are wearing, girlfriend. Okay, so my earrings are from Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they by? I don't know. Okay, so they're, they're but I did also get them through Noble Store. Noble Store Lagos. Culture. Yeah. Lagos. Culture. Okay, and yes. then this outfit. Give us a twirl. Darling, take it in. Uh -oh. Are we not fabulous? Uh -oh. <laughs> and this is an Ashe Okay, which is a traditional Yoruba fabric. Absolutely stunning. I love it. I wish I had this for Fashion Week. It's a moment. Turn around. I love it. I, I feel so happy right now because I feel stylish. I could eat, <laughs> but it's just amazing. And this is just really showcasing Yoruba culture, but with a stylish modern twist. And I'm obsessed. In your shoes? My shoes are Bottega. Okay, she has to give us the Bottega. Yeah, I had to add the little Bottega. And they're comfortable. Um, and yeah, we're keeping it simple. Not a lot of arm candy. Oh, and can we get into this bracelet? She dares. Yes, she dares. This was made in Rwanda. Turn around, turn, turn it around, okay. Yeah, there you go. She dares, can, can the girls buy it? Where, where, where can we buy this? Um, we can just tag Women for Women International and okay, they'll perfect. get the information. All right, and these are for a great cause, guys, so. She yes. She dares. She dares. community and um, you know I run an organization called Eden Venture Group and we are essentially trying to shift mindsets and you know behavioral change around you know the harmful societal norms that many people face especially women and young people. Um, so can you talk about sort of what organizations like yours can do <coughs> to better partner with the many amazing stakeholders in the room and others 
folks in the West and the global South um, to not only tell stories, but to leverage those stories to have an impact. Yeah. Well, I said to a couple of you, this is not my world, so I have to turn that question back to you. I want to tell you about her work, and then I want to ask you, if you are as moved by these stories and this work as I am, then please advise us, how can we amplify this? We have some amazing stories. The last country I visited was South Sudan. I was in South Sudan when um, the men started fighting over power in Sudan and killing thousands of people as a result. Which is in um, Ashoke, which is traditionally Yoruba, as a Yoruba person. Um, and I just really got to appreciate everything that is Nigerian. Um, the stories, I tell stories through fashion. Um, mm -hmm. I use it to uplift people, to inspire. I felt like for the longest time I didn't see anyone who looked like me. Um, so for me, it was more so telling this story or helping people or helping women rather look their best and feel their best. I didn't realize that I actually had any kind of impact on anyone because I just love fashion, so it was my passion that I got to share. But when women started mailing, emailing me and sharing how I inspired them, I was kind of moved and I was just like, really? You know, and then brands started reaching out and I was able to work with them. So I literally get to do what I absolutely love and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so yes, I will be interviewing or asking Miola questions, <laughs> who is one of our filmmakers. Actually, I'll just go right into the questions because we admire you. So Niola is an award-winning Nigerian singer, songwriter, performing artist, actress, and filmmaker. She is known for her exceptional vocal abilities and captivating performances. So as someone who is in the Nigerian space and doing all these amazing things, we appreciate that you're here. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, I'm going to go straight into the questions. 
And my first question for you is, have, sorry, you have a career that spans 17 years, giving the vast array of challenges in the industry. How do you keep motivated and how do you use these challenges as inspiration in your writing? First of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here. Um, it's been very, it's been wonderful to hear everyone's story. Um, it's very inspiring to, to hear feminine. And that was my dream when I started. And when I, when I continued, I realized that there were not many people. I think there were maybe like three in the entire industry that were doing music. And it was tough. It was really tough. Um, as years went by, uh, we, we had more females doing music, but it was still the same challenge. You had to be a certain way. You were either... Um, you were either, I have people say to me, you know, and I'm, I, I have people say to me, oh, you're not even, you're either too feminine or you're not feminine enough, or, you know, they just you're wanted to tell enough. you, yeah, yeah, you know, you're not bad enough, oh, or you're, you know, yeah, I'm just trying to be, right. to be careful here. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'm just trying to be careful you with my words. Speak your truth, speak and so I always just felt like, what's going on? Why am I not allowed to just express myself the way that I truly want to. And uh, over over the years, as time went by, I found out that it was not just for my vocal abilities, because like you said, and like you said, Nigeria is a place where you have raw talent. I didn't even know half of what I had. I didn't even know. A lot of people don't know what they have. And they just do what they find themselves naturally knowing how to do. Like, I think I can sing. And then you're your own a and you're, you're your own writer, you're your own producer. You do everything by yourself. And I find myself in this space. Even though, by sheer luck, I still was very uncomfortable knowing that um, I hadn't, I didn't, I wasn't able to be the be best version of myself. And I hadn't even scratched the surface of who I was, but it was too much. So I kept saying to myself, how come everybody's like Yola, and everyone's like saying that you're big, you're, you've achieved this, and I'm like, I feel so uncomfortable speaking. And I feel, which is very interesting, <laughs> through movies, through television. And I realized that from the, from the songs that I made and the music videos that I made, people would tell me, you're the only one in your space. Oh, yeah. I love the characters, I love the expansiveness of it, it's just, there's so much, like I've watched it now four times. No, <laughs> um, have you seen it? I just love it. It's it so hilarious. I love horror like, films. It's so funny. <laughs> okay, she is back. Okay, so I think we... She's back! <laughs> hey! <laughs> anyway, so here is this brand, Nomadica. Oh, wow. And I'm a big fan. They just introed you. Oh, I went to use the restroom. <laughs> I was like, when you go to Nigeria, I think you're going to appreciate the humor of our Wait, you said the humor of what? Of our community. Like, we're really funny yes. in, in the, the, the biggest wheel of ways. You know what I mean? Like, and we have a different sense of We're right so now. animated. But like, it's just being real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, I don't know. There's just so much. I think it's a person who has like a comedic knack. I try to be able to say, like, be very short. It's true. I love it. I do. Hey guys. Okay, so the girls went shopping. Um, I've got quite a lot of things that I'm going to share with you guys. I'm not going to cut the boxes and all that. I'll just do a fun little try on. Um, and you guys let me know what you think. Keep 
get rid of all that good stuff. So yeah, there's stuff from Zara. Um, a brand sent me an amazing pair of shoes that I can't wait to try. Um, I got some stuff from Shop Bob. Oh, I got this really cool denim vest from Kate. Um, yeah, and there's some beauty products that other brands have sent me. So let's do a fun little fall try on. Okay, so this dress is from Zara and it is stunning. Do you guys see the detail on this? I am so impressed with the workmanship, the corset top. It's um, it's gray all around, but the top the corset part is a little more fitted. And then you've got the pleated skirt to the dress. It also has a fun little slit. If this dress is still available, I would say run and get it. Like, but this is a medium and it fits really well. I did buy the medium and the small. The small was just too small, so the medium is perfect. I love it. It's a little longer than I thought it would be, but for the most part, like with a pair of heels or even flats, and then I can also make the straps a little shorter if I need to, but I don't think it's necessary. <sighs> okay, there's more to try on, but I'm obsessed with this one. This is gorgeous. Okay, so I was so obsessed with the Good American um, blazer that I got, the scuba one, that I picked up this dress. It's a, um, a blazer dress. Um, I think it might be a little on the big side, but I kind of like the way it has that oversized feel, and I feel like with them, um, what's it called? With a nice pair of high heels, it'll look really good. So it's not necessarily fitted, but you still have more of that, you know, hourglass shape going on with it. Um, I might be able to go down a size though. What do you guys think? Let's get a little closer with the details. Should we go up a size? I think, sorry, not up a size, but down a size. I think down a size. They're slip pockets. Um, I think, no, they're full pockets. No, they're, they're real pockets. But yeah, fabric looks decent. Um, this one's like $179, so. I kind of like this one too. Even if I, I feel like if I went down a size, like I would still have this kind of oversized look that I kind of, that I like. Um, but this might be a little big. All right, there's more, let's keep on going. Okay, so this suit is from H&M. I'm gonna button it up in a second. I just wanted to show the top of the pants. They fit really well. I love the rise. Um, H&M's not playing this season. Okay, let me button it up so you guys can see, because this suit looks really, really good. Like, I'm obsessed with the blazer and the fit. And then the pants are, I usually don't do a more narrow pant. I t tend to gravitate towards um, a wider leg, but I actually really love the leg on this. It's a little bit more narrow. It is a bit tailored on top and comfortable. And then ta um, tapers at the bottom. Um, even with flats, I think it'll look great, but with a little bit of a heel, there's no breaks. But yeah, I am obsessed. The cut, the fabric, look at that. And funny enough, I have like a super expensive Michael Kors um, suit that I also got that I'm gonna share with you guys. But um, it's like night and day. I have um, a really cool speaking thing that's coming up. So I got the Michael Kors suit, but I just wanted more beige options for the fall and things that I can wear loafers with. So I really love this. What do you guys think? All right, let's keep on going. Um, can we have a moment for this jacket? Like, look at the detail on this. Okay, this is from Zara, by the way. Look at the fabric. You've got like sequence flower details on what appears to be somewhat like a jacquard, tweed fabric, like, it's a little itchy with that, you know, higher neckline. And then there's the snap closure. You've got, oh, these are not real pockets. I thought they were real pockets. Oh, they are real pockets. So the pockets um, are on the side. That elastic band illusion. So it's like a bomber jacket. I would definitely wear it open. And these are the H&M pants. Absolutely stunning, a moment. The only thing I hate about sequins in general right now, it gets caught onto this hair. So that's a nuisance, but the jacket is, ah, oh, I can't wait to style this. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be styling this on Instagram, so if you guys are not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me.
she follow me? But ugh, can we have a moment? And it's nice and full at the back as well. I love this. It's really beautiful. I think this is a keep, guys. What do we think? Okay, so vests are so huge right now. So I bought a whole bunch of different vests that I'm going to share with you guys because I'm on the hunt for the perfect vest or vest. So we can always do more than one. But this one is from Zara. I love that white trim, raw hem detail situation going on there. I think that's absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, the fit is great. I think this is a small, I'm going to have the text overlay. Uh, and then these pants also from Zara. So I was trying to create a suit and I realized the blazer, which I'm going to put on in a second, it's not a perfect match, but in my head, I'm like, you know what? It could still be an avant-garde suit because one leg here is like a wider, it's a wider pinstripe, navy actually. I thought it was black. Clearly I didn't read the description. And then you have your smaller pinstripe. So it's kind of cool. So it looks like one leg is black. It looks like one leg is blue. Um, so it's really fun. And then I did get a pinstripe um, blazer, which I thought, <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was the perfect match, but it's not. And you'll see it, but the blazer looks sick. Like it's amazing. So I'm going to throw it on. Do you guys see this blazer? Like, do you see this detail? You kind of same, similar to the pants, you have the contradicting stripe patterns being woven in together. And then you have this extra panel, pocket, you know, pocket square section. And then I guess, yeah, so you can button it up. I, pr I probably would leave it open. I'm obsessed. I did get a medium because I like oversized jackets. I know it's not necessary for everyone, but um, I really wanted it oversized, oversized. I kind of am upset. I, what do we think? Should I go down a size? I don't think so. No, I definitely want it oversized, but I would wear it this way, like with these two pieces together and then throw it on as a, the blazer and then with heels to elevate. I, I, I'm obsessed with this. This is hard. I really love this blazer. I think it's one twenty nine two price point, so the price point's really good. Okay, I figured I'll put you guys on the tripod for a second, so I don't know if this is better. If you can see the detail better than the mirror, but yeah. I love it. It's so good. And then you, I think you can see the color contrast a little bit better, so it's... I want to say the vest is black, but it's against this black, which is a richer hue. It looks more bluish, but I don't know. I love it. And the fit is great. Okay, now let's keep on going. Okay, so this vest is also from Zara. And I really love it. It's tweed with a raw hem. It's definitely giving me Chanel, but a little bit more, you know, stylish and fun. So I said I'm on this hunt for a vest. I might just do a whole video about different ways to style vests because that's very much up my alley this season. Um, but yeah, I kind of really love this one. I, I wasn't sure that I was gonna like, love it as much, but the fabric is amazing. I really am feeling the raw hem. It's very lightweight, love the gold button details. If you want to sparse, spice up a vest like this and you're not a fan of the buttons, you can always you know, buy buttons, swap them out and make them more interesting or get like individual different color buttons or add color um, or different metals. So, but I really love this. These are the same pants that I had on before also from Zara, but yeah. I love the oversized effect. This will look really good has a top, has is, but also would look amazing over a dress or a turtleneck. The possibilities are endless on this one. All right, I got more. I have to start with my hair like this because you guys have to see the back of this vest. Like, just how cute is that? You've just got those two ribbons at the back. I think this looks really cool. And then it's a halter in front. And this one is from Margella, so it's a little bit on the pricey side. It's M um, the MM6 size, so definitely a lot more expensive than the Zara, and I did get one from H&M as well. 
Ah, it's really good. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can get a better idea of what it looks like without the tag. It's cute. It's, it's really like a top, but you can still wear it the same way you would wear a vest so over a dress or turtleneck, t-shirt, as is. I really love this one. Oh, it's so fun. What do we think? The fabric is excellent. It's um, definitely some kind of wool blend. Fit is perfect. And I like what it's doing for my shoulders. Um, that's the beauty of halter necks in general. I'm not necessarily the biggest halter neck fan, but they definitely have the tendency to really emphasize your arms and make them look really good. So we love. All right. <laughs> okay. So this vest is Kate, and I'm obsessed. I love. I love a good vest, especially a denim vest. I have an old Rebecca Taylor vest that I've had for maybe almost 20 years. So they definitely are a great investment, regardless of the price point. It really falls down to what you love. And this one just, I don't know, there's something about the design element of Kate that allows me to justify the most outrageously higher price points. And I do that, hopefully, because you guys are right under my vent, I'm hoping that it's not affecting the sound because I don't have my, I'm not mic'd up. I, yeah, anyway. But yes, so there, the thing about Kate that I love, there's a design element and there's subtlety design elements that just make everything just sit so well. The simplicity mixed with design makes me a fashion girly excited and that's why I justify a lot of cape purchases and I understand why girls do. The knits are still on, I think, because I think now those cardigans are like on, in almost $2,000 and I think that's, that's where I draw the line. I think that's just, it's not necessary because you can still get the same vibe, maybe not the same quality. Um, because the quality is really really good and this denim is amazing. I'm I, without even looking at the price tag I think this is Japanese denim, which is the best um, Used to be a denim specialist and this is making me excited. Like I'm so like I Love it and then the pants that I'm wearing are pixie market I have one more vest from H&M that I want to try on that I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod so you can see these pants because they're excellent But do we not love this vest? I would actually wear it this way and then maybe tape it down um, so I don't have any accidents. But, or just, the, I think I would be more comfortable with the little bralette, to be honest. Who am I kidding? But it's so cute. It's so cool. I love, there, there's the belt loop detail on the bottom. And this is what I'm talking about, little details. Like for my, you know, the artsy people that look at the little details in terms of fit, fabric, you know, like just little details like that, I feel make a world of a difference. And the garment, and the way the garment fits, and the way it looks visually, what makes it stand apart. I really love this. Okay, let me try the H&M vest, and then I'll share the pants. Oh, and then, ooh, the Michael Kors suit. I just took it out of the bag. It looks stunning. I need to try it on too. Okay, so this one is H&M. I actually really love this. Like on par with the Margella, on par with the Zara vests, and this is definitely the most cost effective. Um, well, maybe not on par with the Margella. Who am I kidding? Nor with the Zara. They're all very different. This to me is your quintessential classic vest, and it fits really good. The fabric feels amazing too. I think that's why I'm impressed. I thought the fabric wouldn't be. Let me come closer. This thingy. Actually, I'm gonna just try and put my mic on. Who am I kidding? Let me put my mic on. Okay, as I was saying, just the fabric on this is just really good. It's your classic quintessential vest. Great fit, fabric feels great. If I didn't tell you it was from H&M, I'm sure you would be like, wherever I told you from that you would listen, because it just looks really, really good. And that's the thing, h and is really killing it right now, to be honest, like, they're creating a lot of really great silhouettes and pieces. So, yeah, don't sleep on them. But I, I really love this. Now I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod to share the pants, and then I'm gonna try on the Michael Kors suit. I'm gonna share the new pair of shoes that I have in, and then we'll do the makeup another day. It's, just, it's stuff from L'Oreal and Pixie and, just, I, I, there's my office, my whole space. I feel like everything's a mess because there's just stuff everywhere. Um, maybe that might be a vlog too, but let me take you off to show you guys the pants. Okay, aren't they fabulous? Like the fit and it's this belt detail. Look at that. Isn't that cool? 
and it is part of the pan so it won't come off so if silver's not your thing then it, just you know ignore this but i love the detail i feel like they're really fun they're cute they're giving me philip Lim, but without the philip Lim price point and the fit is amazing like it looks great on the bum it's nice and high it's super high actually this is probably about a 12 and a half rise and i really love this do we love should i keep these pants i'm always you know, open to more black pants, especially dress pants, because I feel like you can dress them up, dress them down, they're comfortable. I could wear this with a t-shirt, it looks great with the vest, even if I left the vest open and just did one button, so you can kind of see that, you know, the belt detail when I move. Or, or just leave the vest open completely. I'm not gonna do, well, actually, let's see what that looks like, yeah. So just leaving it open completely and then wearing a tank top under it, that could also look really good, so you can see the, the detail. But the fit is really, I love the fit. I am definitely gonna incorporate more tapered pants into my wardrobe this season because they look great with loafers. And loafers are huge, flats are huge, and then they also frame boots really well. So as much as I love my wide legs, I will definitely incorporate more of this silhouette as well. All right, so this is the Michael Kors suit. It is absolutely stunning. I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod so you can see the full suit. But the blazer is amazing, it is a wool blend. Gorgeous, very expensive, but gorgeous. Um, when I think about quiet luxury, I actually think about Michael Kors. Not Michael by Michael Kors, but Michael Kors because everything is very subtle. Everything is very well made, very well tailored. Um, the fabric selection, exceptional. When I used to sell luxury garments, like I loved selling Michael Kors because it was just the epitome of elegance. Um, timeless, classic, Western style. So that's the difference. And that's the whole idea with classic luxury. I think we tend to forget that it only represents one, you know, part of the world really in terms of dressing because when you go to other parts of the world, it's very colorful, it's very vibrant, it's very rich. And when you only say this way is the way to dress, you're discrediting everybody else. But um, this is definitely a very clean, classic, beautiful silhouette in terms of the blazer. And if you wanted to splurge on just a fun, classic blazer suit that will always live in your closet, that is a statement. You know, this, anything Michael Kors, I always say is worth it. It is absolutely worth it. Um, a lot of my clients just were obsessed. Um, and I think this is the first, is this the first Michael Kors suit that I don't try on things unless I'm ready to buy them. <laughs> and I never, if, at least for me back then, I didn't have the funds to be buying $3,000 or $5,000 suits. Okay, so here's the full suit. The pants are a bell bottom. So that's the rise. It's my belly button's right there. So it's not a super high rise, but it's a higher rise. If you guys can see that, that's where the rise is. And then it's fitted and then a wider, um, leg. So I've got a platform on on this side and they're pretty long so I'm five six five five and a half but I rounded up um, but yeah otherwise you would definitely have to get it um, hem get the length hem but they're just it's such a beautiful suit it's absolutely stunning to me it just screams money regardless of how you style it um, yeah it's it's beautiful <sighs> just beautiful <gasps> Okay, yeah, this is stunning. Wow. The shoes that I got are from Sarah Flint. Um, this is a brand that I've worked with in the past and I've shared with you guys. I think I even did like a whole video or something. Um, but yes, they sent me their holiday line sheet and these platforms caught my eye. They're absolutely stunning. Like the satin finish, beautiful. The detail, look at that, even the strap detail. The color is gorgeous. So I find that their shoes do run a little small. So this is a 42 and a half and it just fits. Um, so definitely go up a size. But the cushioning, it's like, I feel like my feet are on a cloud. This little opening, rubbing just a little bit, but that doesn't bother me. I think I can definitely, because I have one foot on, um, and I'll share what it looks like, the full view, but they're gorgeous. Literally, I feel like I'm on a cloud, very comfortable. Um, because my ankles are super skinny and I've got big feet, I have to put more holes in them. But other than that, it's the detail for me. Look at that. Just beautiful. 
And um, if you didn't see the video that I did about Sarah Flynn, they're made, they're made by the same artisans that do make Jimmy Choo's and all of these other brands. It's just the price point is just a little lower. It's still luxury. They're still expensive. I think these are like in the $700 range, so they're still expensive, but they're friggin' gorgeous and they're so well made. And if this was any other brand, they would cost a lot more. I think my tangles are what, like $12.50. So, and then my St. Laurent platforms are at least a thousand something. So this is not bad price point wise, especially just for the, the fabric, everything. Amazing. Stunning. Okay, so <laughs> I just got this. The package just came in and I was like, okay, I know I ended the video already, but I could not, sh I had to like, have this so this is like a little bonus i love so zara had the, it's from zara i know they had something similar in blush because my sister bought it but this gray it has like a metallic finish on it this little jacket thing is a moment so there's no closures there's just like a hook and eye on top but how fabulous will this look with my um gray givenchy boots Oh my God, I have an outfit. I'm definitely gonna create an outfit for Instagram, so stay tuned for that. I love, okay, yes. So yeah, I'll link this as well. Okay. <laughs> I just realized that I didn't really talk about um, the event in LA. I, I think I spoke briefly about it in the beginning, but I just also wanted to come on and just talk about how impactful everything was for me. Ignore the mess in the background. I literally just got back from LA um, and it was just so inspiring to hear, to, first of all, to be in the room. You know, we had Jordan Peele, Lake Bell, Santi Gold was there. Um, uh, there were so many executives from Paramount. Um, just hearing what Paramount is actually doing in Africa was mind blowing. Um, also, um, oh, one of the ladies, um, I cannot remember her name, but she's, she is Issa Rae's partner for their production company. Um, just meeting so many different directors and actors and their visions and being able to speak to the Nigerian culture and just really them picking brains and seeing how they can, you know, also help with the narrative. And then also with Women for Women International, listening to what they're doing um, and just how they're trying to give women a platform so we can all hear women's, different women's or female stories across the globe. Guys, when I tell you I was so inspired as a creative, being in a space amongst creatives, I won't lie, at first I was a little intimidated because I was just like, but when everyone just kind of like broke it down and everybody was so open and so vulnerable sharing their, their lived experiences and sharing how they want to make a difference and how they want to partner, you know, that was just amazing to me. Like, um, someone said, you know, instead of always looking up to try and partner, just look across and you'll be surprised the person us across from you. Like there was one of the directors there. He, you know, at 26, he made, I know what you did last summer, which we all know pop culture classic, you know? And he's like, yeah, I, you know, when I first of all met, he was like, yeah, I'm a director and a financier. And then, you know, when we were, we, at the end, we did like this little round table where everybody got up and said, you know, what they do, who they were, um, and something you don't know about them. So that was his, you don't know about me type deal. Cause I, well, at least I didn't and a few other people I'm sure, but you know, I think people that were in the space, but just when I tell you, I had such a great time, you know, meeting different directors, meeting different actors, meeting different um, musicians, as well as Nigerian musicians. Um, the founder of Afri, which is um, the African International Film Festival. I was just so honored to be in the space. I'm so inspired. Um, you know, I want to work with uh, women. Um, women for women in terms of just dressing some of the women as well. So that's going to be a very amazing project that we're going to embark on. But guys, just, just get ready. Cause yeah, moving forward. Like I just feel like there's a whole new way of storytelling for me. 
You know, and at first I was just like, uh, but what I do is storytelling, you know. It's very different, a different type of storytelling, but I do feel like we do tell stories with with our clothes and what we wear and how we want the world to perceive us. So, but stay tuned because there's a lot coming in terms of, you know, myself with African designers and African fashion houses and just storytelling in general. So stay tuned. Um, I want to make you guys proud. So just keep on watching. But yes, your girl was just living it up. Like Lake, first of all, Lake Bell was just the coolest person to let us come into her home and create this um, well, I, I shouldn't say let us because I was still like a guest, but because Fifi, who you guys saw giving the speech, is my girl. So I felt like I was, you know, helping out a little bit, but just everybody was just so chill. I think that's really what it was. One of the girls literally was telling Jordan Peele, like, you know, I'm so happy you're not an a-hole. Like, you are just so down to, like, <laughs> and, and, you know, no one took a, like, everybody was just so chilled. Um, and I love that. I really loved being in that space and I'm so motivated. I'm just going to like write notes from everything so I don't forget anything. Um, and I just really internalize it. I want to internalize being in that space. But anywho, enough of the rambling. Make sure you guys check out all the amazing groups that were there, the Eden group. Um, I'm going to link everything um, in the description box so you guys can check them out. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram. I'm going to have a highlight just kind of with some of the major highlights from the event. And I'm going to like add a little bit more of the more intimate moments um, for my subscribers on Instagram. So if you're not subscribed to me, subscribe. It's fun. <laughs> um, but yes, guys, follow me on Instagram, TikTok. It's odd by money on all the platforms. What did you guys think about all the stuff that I got from Zara and Aporte and all of that? Um, what should I keep? What should I keep? Let me know with your comments below. Also, guys, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss a video. It is completely free for you guys, but it means the world to me. And I would love for you guys to subscribe. Join the family. Let's hit that 50K so I can give away some gifts. All right, so I love you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.